On April 11, 2015, Presidents Barack Obama and Raul Castro shook hands at the Summit of the Americas in Panama. This marked the first meeting between a U.S. and Cuban head of state since the two countries severed their ties in 1961. It was a moment few believed would ever happen in their lifetime. However, one announcement changed the course of history. Today, the United States of America is changing its relationship with the people of Cuba. In the most significant changes in our policy in more than 50 years, we will end an outdated approach that for decades has failed to advance our interests, and instead, we will begin to normalize relations between our two countries. Through these changes, we intend to create more opportunities for the American and Cuban people and begin a new chapter among the nations of the Americas. The Holy Father, Pope Francis, is credited with playing a crucial role in brokering the historic diplomatic breakthrough by encouraging the two sides to resolve humanitarian questions, the release of political prisoners, and initiating a new phase in relations. For deeper perspective, first-hand perspective, I travel to St. John's University to speak with two gentlemen with close ties to the island nation, Professor Basilio Montero, director of the university's graduate program for international communication. He and a group of students traveled to Cuba just months after diplomatic relations were reestablished. And Bishop Octavio Cisneros, a priest of the Diocese of Brooklyn who was born and raised in Cuba. I first asked Bishop Cisneros if Pope Francis's role in brokering the deal was a sign of the Catholic Church's global influence and inquired if he felt satisfied this was a meaningful first step in fostering permanent diplomatic ties. It's not just the influence of the Catholic Church, it's the influence of what we believe. And we believe that there should be understanding and peace amongst people, and that dialogue is always necessary. And um, our Holy Father has basically um, tried to do that, tried to bring the two parties, not in any political way, uh, our Holy Father should not take any sides. We should not take any sides. We should allow those um, two sides to be able to sit down at a table and talk about how we can improve uh, the Cuban people, how we can have uh, a relationship, how all those basic human rights can be lived um, 90 miles from our coast. and. and and, and that's basically what, what the church is doing. I have to see um, a more openness on the freedom of the press, the freedom of communication. You know, there has been said that um, um, now the internet is going to be opened, uh, but it's, um, the internet is um, uh, the ability of uh, exchange of ideas, uh, the ability of the Cuban people to speak to the world and, and to hear what the word has to say. Professor Montero picked up on this idea of communication and why it was so important for him as an educator to have his students travel to Cuba. I sincerely believe that that is my calling as a professor is to uh, inculcate in the students this, this uh, way of thinking that they are responsible for a better world and uh, they can make a difference. This uh, particular trip to Cuba was in a way what we would call people to people diplomacy. And it was primarily providing our students an opportunity to go to a place, to a country where people in a way would like to say something but they cannot, then people have restrictions to asking questions. So how does one conduct himself or herself in this kind of circumstances? So I prepared them and I said you have to be prudent, you have to be judicious in what kind of questions you ask, who you talk, but at the same time, be friendly, be welcoming, be sharing, be generous, be kind. At the same time, uh, you know, uh, you have to be thoughtful. As for the future? What I would like to see uh, happen, the first things would be, you know, providing them an opportunity to uh, buy food, uh, to provide them with jobs, uh, give them opportunity to earn livelihood, have control over their own livelihood instead of being controlled by somebody else. So open up those opportunities because people want to work. And um, Cubans I find very, very ingenious, very, very innovative. They, they have, their favorite word is to resolve the problem. I'm going to make a distinction between optimism and hope. Optimism is the attitude that everything is going okay 
and everything is going to be uh, perfect. Uh, so I'm an optimist. Um, the two countries will speak. There will be freedom of, edu of uh, religion. There will be freedom of expression, uh, freedom of education. There would be um, in, an exchange of ideas in the two countries. It's a, that's optimism. I look at hope in the religious sense. And hope has to do with my belief in God, that God is guiding all our actions. And that in the end, no matter whatever we do, God has a plan for us.